Hello, hello, and welcome back to another video. Today we're back once again with Genshin Impact. So the plan for today, since we're back in Mondstadt, is to actually go and find someone very, very special. Now this certain someone is actually someone you guys have been recommending I go and speak to for the longest time now. And I'm incredibly excited to interact with this character again, so without further ado, let's get back into the game. And we're back into the game and we're back in Mondstadt. As I said last time, this place just feels like home, so I love being back here. As you guys can see, we have to head up to the Animo God statue, so we're gonna go up to the plaza and see who we have to go and speak to. I mean, you guys have already seen the title and the thumbnail, so you know who we're gonna go and speak to, and honestly, I'm so excited to go and speak to him again. So without further ado, I guess we just have to come over here? Because she's acting as if she's talking and laughing with somebody else. Oh, Paimon's creeped out. <laughs> I had an imaginary too when I was a kid. What? Friend too. You mean, you used to act like that too? Uh, so is this an invisible friend who hangs out with you sometimes? Or do they just exist in your imagination? Imaginary means in your imagination. In your imagination means imaginary. <laughs> imaginary. Imagination. Oh, you must mean imagined friend, right? Why didn't you just say so? R yeah. <laughs> so, this imaginary friend of yours, when does Paimon get to meet them? Uh, we don't hang out anymore. Seriously? So, imaginary friends just disappear when you grow up? <laughs> Tragically, yes. Oh, Paimon was looking forward to meeting yours. Hey, don't suppose your sister has an imaginary friend too? Sure they do. No way! You guys are so lucky! <laughs> because they have this game in Liyue. Have you heard of it? It's a four player game, but it seems you guys could play it with just the two of you. Right. Oh, Traveler! Venti! There he is! Oh, tone deaf bard! What are you doing here? <laughs> I'm here because Lisa has been making some exciting new contraptions. Oh. <laughs> Why does the thought of Lisa's contraptions make Paimon so nervous? Mm. Come now, that's no way to speak about the elegant Miss Lisa. <laughs> For True. this particular contraption, Lisa had to import some dangerous materials from Sumeru. Oh. D dangerous? Looks like a regular monocle to me. <laughs> I know, right? Apparently, though, it's called an Ernama detector. Oh? Sadly, Lisa isn't able to use it herself, so I'm borrowing it for a while. And also, I'm testing it out for her, to see if it actually works. Ooh. Huh? Why can't Lisa use it? Yeah, good question. Hmm. Perhaps it's because she lacks a certain childlike sense of wonder. Or maybe there's some other reason for it. That's kind of sad. <laughs> if you want to know for sure, just ask her yourself sometime. Sure. So you can see them? Go on, tell us, what does his imaginary friend look like? <laughs> that would be telling. Venti. Anyway, <laughs> it's all yours now, Traveler. Take a look, see if you can see Nora's imaginary friend. Oh. Oh, Wait, wow. Do you see him? Do you see him? Wow, it really works. Ah, huh, so it does work for you two. Paimon wants to see? Wait, but this gizmo isn't in Paimon's size. What? All right then, you'll just have to be Paimon's eyes on the ground. Let's go see what everyone's imaginary friends look like. Isn't this a bit intrusive? <laughs> Four of the flower shop always seems kind of floaty headed, you know? <laughs> Paimon? I bet she has an imaginary friend. Okay, this jumps straight into it, I guess. Yeah, so as you saw, it was Venti that we're seeing today. I mean, you guys already knew that, but uh, I absolutely adore Venti. He's definitely one of my favorite characters in the whole game so far. I love all the characters, but Venti just has such a wonder to him. He's just a precious little bean. Okay, Flora. I'm here to spy on your imaginary friend, apparently. There it is. Behold. A floaty imaginary friend for floaty-headed Flora. A bloody floaty. Oh. <laughs> Wait, imaginary friends can be plants now? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Traveler. Hi, Bard. Hi, Flora. Have you got a minute? Sure. How can I help? Who's your friend? Hmm. Oh, you mean Mr. Floaty? Most people can't see him. 
Mr. Floaty is my bestest friend. We grew up together. Uh, no fair. Paimon hates feeling left out. Flora, why exactly are you friends with a bloaty floaty? Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with it? I always wanted to be friends with a plant who could fly. Friends with a flying plant? Why? <laughs> because then when it's windy, you and your friend can fly off into the sky together. You gotta admit that's pretty cool. Isn't also that terrifying. Being blown away? Yeah. <laughs> that's what some people like to call it. I only found out this plant existed from an explorer who told me stories of his adventures. I think his name was... Stanley. Oh, Stanley. Oh, Stanley's an adventure. Yeah. And you can tell he's an expert at it from the stories he tells. <laughs> Aww. The amazing adventures of Stanley are super famous in Mondstadt. He's in the city at the moment. You should go ask him to tell you some of his stories. Mm hmm That sounds like a fun idea for next time. <laughs> but uh, right now we have other things to attend to. That sounds like a great idea for next time. <laughs> Flora is a pretty mysterious kid. Hmm, which child shall we interrogate next? Okay. That's I'm one way to put thinking. it. Oh, how about that little guy on the bridge? Timmy. Oh! Timmy. No way! Well, uh, that is unexpected. Yeah. Timmy's imaginary friend is a ruin guard? I don't want to mess with his birds anymore. <laughs> Am I seeing things? Paimon's freaking out right now. That thing is sure to attack us. Uh, uh, what say you we postpone our conversation with Timmy for the time being? Yeah, Paimon, it's time to say the line. Huh? Paimon has a favorite line? The one about exploring the area ahead of us later. Uh, seriously? Oh, alright then. How about we explore the area ahead of us later? Children are more open-minded. Is that why they can think up all kinds of imaginary friends? Huh. <sighs> Fitting, isn't it? That the city of freedom should be home to children with such boundless powers of imagination. What about adults' imaginations? Let's ask some adults at the tavern! Oh, we have to go behind the top. Whoa! No way! The thing about wine is, you have to drink it at the tavern, or you miss out on half the fun. Oh. Seems to me you'd find some way of keeping yourself amused, even if you drank alone. <laughs> if I didn't know any better, I would say you're being deliberately uncivil. You two need Just to calm down. Drink responsibly on my premises, okay? Oh, and if I did have one too many, what then? You'd throw me out along with the trash, is that it? Oh. Throw you out? You know, the same way you threw out Father's legacy. You sold off his mansion, or maybe you've forgotten. I see no reason to cling to things that have outlived their purpose. Is that so? Then I trust you were most swift indeed to part with a certain vase? Sorry. I have no recollection. That's odd. Master Diluc, I'm sure I saw such a vase in your home. A beautiful one. Unmistakable, in fact. The yeah, air feels heavy here. <laughs> okay. There wasn't anything. Seems our suspicions were right. Grown-ups don't appear to have imaginary friends. Like I said, a lack of childlike wonder. Seems adults are the same everywhere. So people just stop dreaming when they grow up? Okay, well, Paimon for one never wants to grow up. <laughs> hmm, this raises an interesting question. At what age exactly do people's imaginary friends disappear? Hmm. Let's go and check. Hmm. How about Ellen? Someone of her age surely must have some imagination left, don't you think? Okay. Uh-oh. Somehow Paimon finds the idea of not being able to see Ellen's imaginary friend kind of scary. Hello, Ellen. Wait, what? Jean? <laughs> Is Master Jean Ellen's imaginary friend? Ellen is really determined to become a knight. Yeah, 
She's so conscientious. That as well. It's terrifying. Hmm? Oh, hello. What are you guys doing? Are you always training here? Mm, seems like it. You bet. Today, I heard Stanley talking about his adventures. It was incredible. It got me really pumped up. Oh, I hope I can be as outstanding as him one day. Aww. So that you can fight shoulder to shoulder with Master Jean? <laughs> I, I mean, obviously, I want to become a knight. And if I got to go on an adventure with Jean herself, well, even better. Seems Ellen really looks up to Jean. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, thanks. I was thinking, it's not every day I get to hang out with the honorary knight. Would you join me for some sword training? Oh, how can I smash all these training dummies at once? Oh, you want us to do the commission? Are you, are you serious? Okay, well, uh... Wait. So that's how to do it. I'm impressed. Yeah, just summon Geo. You'll be fine. Oh, thank you. It's clear I still have a long way to go in my training. <laughs> so modest. I, for one, think you're quite the pro at this already. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm exhausted from training, so clearly my fitness needs some work. One day, though, I'll smash all the training dummies in Mondstadt. Good for you. Ellen, Ellen, she's our girl. If she can't do it, um... Hilly <laughs> <laughs> A good Thanks. attempt. Shoot, I got so caught up here I forgot there's something I was supposed to do today. Uh-oh. Ugh, but I'm so sore from training. I can hardly move. Honorary Knight, could you deliver a message to Jack for me? To Jack? Sure, where can I find him? He's in the tavern, right? He's gone adventuring at the Temple of the Never Lion mind. with Stanley today. Stanley's okay. a truly legendary adventurer, renowned in all of Mondstadt. He once set foot in the Mare Javari. We were going to meet up tonight and discuss adventure plans. <sighs> Could you let him know it'll have to be another day? Temple of the Lion? Sure, I missed that place. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Head to the Temple of the Lion. The great adventurer Stanley. Ellen has asked you to search for the Greenhorn adventurer Jack within the Temple of the Lion. It seems he is traveling together with the legendary adventurer Stanley. The Temple of the Lion? <gasps> we explored this place once before, didn't we? During the storm terror incident. We did. Seems like it's now a hot spot for adventurers. That can only mean one thing. We didn't bag all the loot last <laughs> time. It looks like we can't go any further. No. Nope. Not to worry. Allow me. Oh, Venti, you king. I can't believe we get to play as Venti. This is so awesome. If I could have an Archon, it would definitely be Venti. I love the Raiden Shogun, and I absolutely adore Zhongli's meteorite. But Venti, he's just my boy. He's my boy. Look at him. He's a little bean. Here we go. Whee! <laughs> oh, he's so much fun. I love him. There we go. Hello, you lot. Can we get the black hole? Yeah! Oh, that's so cool. I mean, a big old Geo Meteorite or massive Animo Black Hole. Zhongli, I love you, mate, but Venti's my boy. <laughs> and as I said, I absolutely adore the Raiden Shogun. I think her design is so cool. Are those guys? But it's Venti! Look at him go! <laughs> black hole time. Nice! And there it is. Jack and Stanley. How's it going, guys? Hang on, you got a chest behind you. Um, I was so sure I was about to die. Nah, not today. To be fair, that could have gone either way. <laughs> so, you must be Jack the Adventurer, I assume? Yes. Who are you? Actually, we came looking for you. Mm -hmm. Ellen has a message for you. She said she won't be able to join you today to plan out your next adventure together. She'll join you some other time. Oh, I see. I feel bad you had to come all this way to find me. And then had to rescue me. Nah, it's fine. Huh? I don't see what all the fuss is about. It was nothing that I, Stanley, couldn't have dealt with by myself. Definitely. Oh, you are Stanley? You are that legendary adventurer? Renowned in all of Mondstadt? Who once set foot in the Mare Javari? <laughs> <laughs> the very same. <laughs> I must say, it's an honor to meet one as legendary as yourself. Wonderful. Well then, how would everyone like to proceed? Head back or head further inside? Jack, what do you think? I think we should keep going. With Stanley by our side, 
We'll have no problem. Okay, motion passed by unanimous consent. Let's head further in. Okie dokie. So, I'm guessing you mostly came here because you want to hear my adventure stories. Am I right? <laughs> no, we really were just looking for Jack. <laughs> what? Do you know who I am? I am Stanley, renowned adventurer of Mondstadt. Yeah, I think we got that. Yep. I am Stanley, the living legend. Stanley who braved the Manjavari. Enough already. Ugh. Stop name dropping yourself every time you open your mouth. Yep. It's true though. Stanley is the most amazing guy. <laughs> well, Jack will listen, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> You and your partner reached the Merjavari, a famously terrifying place with not a wisp of wind. Precisely. There was a deathly silence in the air. A sea of ashes stretched out before us, as far as the eye could see. The Merjavari. Suddenly, my partner was caught in a whirlpool whipped up by an evil beast. Luckily, I managed to grab hold of him just in time. Wow! So, did he make it? <sighs> Sadly, in the end, I alone was able to set foot on home ground once more. With the gentle breeze carried away the tears running up in my eyes. <sighs> Poor guy. How could that happen? Jack, yeah, you can't cry so easily if you want to be a great adventurer. <sighs> I, I know, <laughs> because an adventurer's proudest achievement is to die in the course of their final adventure. But whatever happens, no adventurer should ever die in a place where the wind doesn't blow. The wind has to bring your spirit back to Mondstadt. That's right. To die in a place where the wind blows, and to have your spirit carried back to Mondstadt on the wind, that's... Thanks, Stanley. Traveler, I believe I've made a small discovery. Oh? Could I ask you to use the Nernama detector once more? Mm-hmm. Wait, what? There's... Wait. Was that his friend? What? Like his partner? Stanley has an imaginary friend? It seems his imaginary friend is a seasoned warrior. Covered in scars from head to foot and a look of staunch determination on his face. It fits Stanley's description of himself. You're saying his imaginary friend is an idealized version of his own self? Oh. Interesting idea, but is it true? Please excuse me. Uh, I'll be leaving now. Hmm. Bye, Stanley. Do you two still have time to spare? What is it? A few days ago, Stanley got drunk and told me a secret. Something he's never told anyone before. Oh? The weapons he took on his adventure all those years ago. They were none other than those once wielded by Mondstadt's greatest hero, Vanessa herself. The sword of brilliant valor and the shield of magnificent honor. Mm. I don't know whether you believe me, but apparently both the sword and shield are still right here in Mondstadt over in Dadaupa Gorge. Since you guys are the experts at this, can you come with me to try and retrieve these two legendary weapons? Mm, why did he abandon them in the wild then? I don't know. Outstanding individuals always come with their quirks, right? If I can just get a hold of something impressive enough to show my family what I'm capable of, maybe they'll finally come around to the idea of me being an adventurer. Right now, I'm just a rookie. My abilities are limited. And my parents don't support my goals one bit. Mm. So, what do you say? Help a guy out? I can't bring myself to tell Stanley about it, because my reasons are so... Uh, selfish. But, I swear I'll give the weapons back to him as soon as I'm done. Hmm. Aww, poor Jack. Let's help him out! Alright then. Venti, you coming too? Hmm, I don't know. Oh, one other thing. I have a bottle of rare vintage wine oh. that I had someone <laughs> fetch for me a couple years ago. Help me find these weapons, and it's all yours. 
Dada Upa Gorge, was it? <laughs> Let's hurry. There's no time to lose. That's Venti. <laughs> you eavesdropping? Search for the Sword of Brilliant Valor. But that was super cool getting to play more as Venti. Oh, a bunch of hilly churls. Oh. Are they holding some kind of ceremony? And what's with that pile of knickknacks? Are they worshipping them? Hmm. Seems so. That must be the sort of brilliant valor. Oh, surely. hi, fellas. <laughs> but as I was saying, it's super cool to play as Venti some more since the only time I think we played with him was when we battled the Valen. So I really enjoyed that. I think getting to play as him a little bit more really just confirms how much I like him and really, really do want him. But I guess until he's rerun, we're just going to have to wait and enjoy the characters that we currently have. That's it, team. Good job. Sword of Brilliant Valor. <laughs> Lo and behold, the sword of brilliant valor. Are you sure? Looks kind of basic to Paimon, and a little worse for wear, too. <laughs> Why would hilly trolls be bowing down before a piece of junk like this? Uh, uh, seems somebody tossed an old sword into a pile of spoils these hilly trolls were already celebrating. Hmm. This is in terrible shape, and it's so basic, I... <sighs> I'm at a loss for words. Mm. Hmm. Say, Jack, have you ever seen an Animo crystal fly? They're found in the open country around Mondstadt City. If you saw one in broad daylight, you wouldn't bat an eyelid. But in the pitch blackness of night, its brilliant glow is mesmerizing. True. It truly resembles an exquisite crystal dancing in the night air. Is Valor not the same? When everything is going your way, it seems meaningless. Fades into the background. But when you're in dire straits, valor is the thing that gets you fired up and fighting back. It's the brilliant ray of light that guides you out from the darkness. Excellent recovery. You're right. You're right. Then this has to be it. This is the sword of brilliant valor. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we got our sword. Now we just need that shield. Yep. Let's scout around. It's definitely in Dada Upa Gorge. So, uh, huh? There's somebody there. Oh, Stanley. Busted. What's he doing here? He's acting so weird. Mm -hmm. What happened? Why did you stop all of a sudden? Uh-huh. Oh, uh, it's nothing. Uh, just one of those Mora spouting weasel thieves passed by is all. <laughs> what? Where? I, I want to see. <laughs> Maybe another time. <laughs> we have a shield to find, remember? Oh. Oh, the... Hilly Charles got it. Lo and behold, the shield of magnificent honor. Wow. Liar, liar, pants on fire. It's a chunk of wood. Well, that is a shield, right? A chunk of scrap wood with the handle attached. Who in their right mind would use this as a shield? That Hilly Charles, There's also apparently. wine stains on it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this was just taken from a wine barrel. Oh. And yet, my bard's intuition tells me that this is none other than the Shield of Magnificent Honor. Warriors wear their battle scars with pride, and shields are no different. Surely an intact shield is one that has shied away from the battlefield. Is not the broken and splintered shield the one that has fought in countless wars and lived to tell the tale? Mm -hmm. Though the soldier's body be tired and torn, still they fight till the very end, till they have no blood left to bleed. Such magnificent strength of will. Is that not the true meaning of honor? I agree with Venti. You do have a point. Shiny new shields don't stay new and shiny for long. Okay, then. Well, maybe if we ask nicely, he'll just let us take the shield of magnificent honor for free. Maybe. Should we ask him? Ahem. Excuse me, Mr. Hilly Churl? Hello. Hello. What? Bella. Okay, you take it from here. Hope you've picked up some hilly trillium by now. If not, there's always body language. Vin plata dada. Masimita. Masimita. Seems cheerful enough. Maybe negotiating will work after all. Kucha papa kucha ye. Oh. Uh oh, he did not seem to appreciate that. <laughs> Betty sing song, you give shield, okay? Mani nini biao. Oh no. Uh oh. He did not seem to appreciate that. Uh. 
Oh no, we ticked him off big time. Oh, I messed it up. Oh, fellas, come on, we can still talk about this, right? Venti, sing song. No. All right then. I should have been studying my hilly churl. Hilly churlian. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bye. He dropped the shield of magnificent honor and ran. Guys, thank you so much. I can't believe I actually found them. Well. Mom, Dad, check out the legendary weapons I found. Huh? Oh. Hey, wait! The wine, you promised! Oh, and I actually helped a lot this time. <laughs> Aww. What are you doing here, Stanley? Out for a stroll? Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, <laughs> what are you doing here, Bard? Fancy that, huh? You, um, uh, out for a stroll, too? Oh, that's right. An after-dinner stroll, to be precise. We were also helping a friend look for something. Paimon's starting to think Stanley might be a fraud. Yeah, I'm seriously starting to think that too. Did Stanley plant the sword and shield here in advance so as to not hurt Jack's feelings? Adventurers must be pretty familiar with Dada Upa Gorge. You fought battles here before, after all. <laughs> you better believe it. I can navigate this whole area with my eyes closed. Wow. And I admire your perseverance and your memory too. Mm -hmm. It's only to be expected of a great adventurer like me. You guys had better watch out though. This place is crawling with hilly churls. I uh, I'll get back to my um uh, stroll now. Goodbye. Bye. Guilty conscience, much? Yep. <laughs> Well, he shouldn't have gotten so carried away bragging to Jack, should he? Yeah, it's his own fault. Although, on further reflection, I must say I'm intrigued. Someone who can't let go of the past and gives up on the present instead. I wonder, if such a person was forced to take their first step towards the future, which way would they go? Hmm. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just musing to myself. Muse away, Venti. Anyway, I propose we take a trip to Angel's Share tonight. Oh? Okay, but before we head over to Angel's Share, it looks like we actually have to get Charles unstuck from Gene's story quest. Now, hopefully it's a case of just quickly going to speak to him, and then we can go back over to Angel's Share. And it shouldn't take a couple of seconds, but we'll go over, see what Charles has to say, and then hopefully we can get straight back to Angel's Share. I was jokingly gonna say what direction what they go. I was gonna is, say a tavern. Kiddo? A fruit juice store? <laughs> How rude! Especially Charles. since we're here to help! Yeah. Help? Oh, yes. You're the acting grandmaster's new hotshot helper, aren't you? Uh, that's one way of putting it, but... Great. Tell Jean I need my quarterly tax return forms, then. Oh. It's time to get Elzer on to doing the accounts again. I must say, though... The tax rate on alcohol in Mondstadt is pretty steep. Do you really need to get Gene involved with stuff like this? Acting Grandmaster Gene personally goes over all the accounts. After all, the wine industry is Mondstadt's main source of income. Gene takes great pains to make sure no detail is overlooked. Hyman never knew that. Gene's job is even harder than it seems. The Acting Grandmaster's hard work indeed makes our lives a whole lot easier. We're certainly very lucky, but to put it bluntly, we just take it for granted that that's the norm now. Mm. Wow. How do you sleep at night knowing how much pressure you put Jean under? Yep. <sighs> when you put it like that, I do feel quite ashamed. I suppose I should give her one on the house next time she's here. <laughs> Although, I doubt the acting grandmaster even has the time to spare for that. Sounds like a poor excuse to deny Jean a free drink. Yeah. Come on, let's go and see Jean. Okay, well, we're obviously not going to go and speak to Jean right now, but we're going to go back into Angel Share as we're now able to continue with the Venti story. Hello, Stanley. Oh, hello, Venti. Oh. <laughs> this isn't obvious at all. Tell me what should I do? Huh? Why does he keep repeating his own name? There's another Stanley. <laughs> Surely not. Even I've never heard tell of a second Stanley. Well, we saw it, didn't we? Oh, Stanley. It should have been me. 
I should have been the one to die in the Meljabari that day. Why won't your spirit come and stop me from using your name? Why is Oh no, it was the other person. If only you hadn't had to save a rookie like me, you would have never died in that windless corner of the world. You were a renowned adventurer, destined to become a legend one day. But now, that'll never happen because your life was cut short and all because of a worthless tag along. Uh, does anyone get what's going on here? I think I do. I think our friend really did make it to the Mare Javari. And I think the tragedy he encountered there was real too. Mm -hmm. But the real adventurer, the real Stanley, that was his, that partner. Was his partner, not him. Mm -hmm. The real Stanley is the one who died to save our Stanley. Wait, so the only reason our Stanley is called Stanley in the first place is because he stole the other Stanley's name? It's kind of, I yeah, that messed up. The case. Stanley, for so many years I've lived in fear. Fear that Mondstadt will forget all about you. So I tell you adventure stories at every opportunity. Monster well, must forget. remember. <laughs> Stanley reached the center of the Madjabari. Yeah. He's the greatest adventurer there ever was, and he lives on. Stanley will never die, because I am Stanley. I am Stanley. I'm sorry, Stanley. I'm getting too old. Now, <sighs> are you guys planning on eavesdropping much longer? Oh, Stanley. Go away. Save your questions. And just leave me in peace. But... Leave now. Don't make me tell you again. Honorary Knight, Venti, and Paimon. I'm so glad you guys are here. Hi, Jack. I've been looking for you everywhere. I wanted to thank you again for helping me find the sword and shield. My parents are finally supporting me. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, really. They even said they're gonna pay for someone to fix up the Sword of Brilliant Valor and Shield of Magnificent Honor for me, so I can take them out on the road. Oh. That's wonderful! So, Jack, is this the part where you bid farewell to Mondstadt and set off on your intrepid trip traversing to that? No, not yet. I still don't have what it takes to go too far from home just yet. Mm. Besides, I'm sure Stanley still has a few stories left to tell. <laughs> They're what inspired me to become an adventurer in the first place. Uh... Stanley, I... Oh, you're drunk again. We'll see you tomorrow then. After your hangover wears off, maybe you can tell me some more of your stories? Bye, Jack. Stanley's really fond of that kid, don't you think? Uh, Jack. Jack. Jack left. Oh, I see. Well, thank you for not telling him about my secret. Huh? All of a sudden you're facing the facts? That isn't like you. Just now, I couldn't bear to look at him. His adventurous spirit is so pure, unblemished. Mm. Just a weary old feckless frog. But that kid is a brand new shining star, full of potential. I cannot allow his dreams to be crushed. Total fraud. Stanley's adventure stories and experiences. They're all true, aren't they? Stories? Experiences? What's the point of them anymore? To be honest, my memories of adventuring and of Stanley. They're hazy these days. That's my biggest secret of all. And my biggest fear. All these years, I've been living to tell his story. But his personality and... The details of his life, I don't remember them clearly anymore. <laughs> but the one thing I can never forget is that he died in a windless land where his spirit can never be recovered. Mm, his whole life, he's been drowning in guilt. Yeah. Exactly. Even in his memory, the real Stanley isn't the living, breathing friend he knew at all. Instead, He's become fixed on the image of him as that battle-scarred warrior. And that image has held him captive his entire life. 
I'm too old. I never let go. But still, so much has slipped away. I'm completely and utterly worthless. No, no don't say that. No adventurer should have to go that way. No adventurer ever. Hans Archibald. <sighs> My true name? How did you know? <laughs> Uh, uh, oh, Venti. I, I can hear the wind blowing in the Mare Javari. Uh, uh, Whoa. I, I always believed you existed. Will you hand me your old friend's spirit? Uh, uh, what? No way! Oh, that's beautiful! Venti! I, I, I can't believe it! Wow! Thank and thank you, Lord Barbados. I'm sorry. It's gonna take me some time to calm back down. But I think that I'm gonna be okay. Ah, wonderful! Stanley reconnected with his true self and Jack can finally go his own way. This calls for a celebration! And by celebration, I do, of course, mean libation. Oh. And by libation, you mean you're not leaving this tavern till you're too drunk to walk, right? <laughs> no, the wine here's too expensive. Jack still owes me some wine, though. He promised me a rare vintage in exchange for helping him out, remember? True. I'll head off to fetch the wine. See you shortly. Let's meet at the usual place. Okay. Bye, Venti. Huh? Where's that supposed to be? Why has Paimon never heard of it? Hey, Tone Death Bard! <laughs> I think I know where that is. Possibly. Head to the usual place. That was so beautiful, though. It gave me goosebumps how Venti let Stan or Hans let go of Stanley's spirit like that and just give him that closure. That's so pure and so beautiful. Ah, oh, Venti is such a king. Oh, we have to go up the statue? Hang on. <laughs> there he is, look! Venti, what are you doing? You can fly up here. I have to climb. Hello, Venti. What are you doing? Hello. You made it. Finally. Just tell us where you meet next time, okay? We looked everywhere. <laughs> <sighs> so... Did you at least manage to find your wine? Yep. Well, sort of. Jack made it out to be a rare collector's edition vintage. Oh. When actually it's just a half bottle of regular cider. Ah. <sighs> this takes me back. The first time I saw this view, I hadn't even taken on this form yet. Hmm? It was about 2,600 years ago, before the world had come under the rule of the Seven. At that time, old Mondstadt was ruled by a tyrant who sealed off the city's perimeter with a ferocious hurricane. Oh. Even the birds couldn't get in or out. Old Mondstadt? Oh, Pima remembers! Nowadays it's known as Storm Terror's Lair, right? You mentioned it before! Yeah. That's right. The tyrant of the winds who once ruled from that tower was Decarabian, god of storms. Hmm. Back then, I was but a wisp among the thousand winds. I wasn't a god of anything. I didn't even have a human form. I was just a tiny elemental being who lived in the wind. A gentle breeze bringing subtle changes for the better. Or tiny seeds of hope. A tiny elemental being? Without a human form? Venti, do you mean you used to look different than you do now? Mm. Yep. My current form is not so different from the situation with fake Stanley. I took the form of a friend. In old Mondstadt transpired the story to be told. Where a tyrant ruled, I met a boy not that old. The lyre he played, and for a song he sought. But storm walls blocked blue sky, he was sincerely distraught. I do so wish to see the birds in flight, said he, his strong eyes filling with light. But his voice was lost in the howling wind's churn. For the whirlwind takes and gives not in return. 
The true sky and songs that cageless soar. Were they not wishes worth fighting for? So the boy turned, extending his hand. Let us cast down the tyrant and his walls from this land. The young boy raised in the flag of revolt. Whoa. And I threw myself into freedom's tumult. Victorious were we who fought to be free. Gods fell, winds whipped, nations shook violently. In the smoke, a despot met his doom. And we watched as his great tower fell none too soon. No! Mondstadt began anew. The story passed down. That too. And since then, never has another worn its crown. So then what? What happened to your friend? Same situation as with Stanley. Say, Paimon, do you wish to hear the next part of the story? Yes, of course. Oh, the Venti. suspense is killing Paimon. Paimon, go pick a couple of apples. Now's the time you suddenly get a craving for apples? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Getting a little peckish or something. Oh, so peckish. <sighs> Paimon's had it up to here with you. <sighs> you know, you're so smart it almost makes me uncomfortable sometimes. <laughs> But then, maybe it's right that true friends can tell what the other is thinking. Aww. A refreshing drink, a gentle breeze. <sighs> Moments like this always take me back. Back to a song that I first heard from him. I'm listening. Fly, fly away. Like a bird in the sky. See the world on my behalf. To the heavens, may you fly. Oh, that's beautiful. Venti? Quietly gazes at Venti. The green-clad figure is uncharacteristically silent. Sometimes even the lysome wind grows heavy in its grief. But not that mortals could ever see a moment oh so brief. Oh my word, I had no idea. So just to get this right, the form Venti has taken in his human form is actually his friend who started the revolution against the tyrant. And Deluc was there as well by the looks of it. And sadly Venti's friend died during the revolution, but they succeeded. And Venti took on his friend's form at least Somewhat. I had absolutely no idea about any of that. And I'll say this with every character, but I'm so happy that we get to do the character stories and explore the characters' backgrounds. You do develop such a wonderful bond with all the characters, so it's really nice that Genshin gives you the opportunity to hang out with them a little bit and maybe get a bit more of their backstory. And as I said earlier, Venti for me was one of the ones that I really was interested in because he is one of my favorite characters. He is one of the most interesting ones for me. Even though it was so sad, I'm so glad I got to see it. Now, I'd love to see more from Deluc's point of view on that whole thing. Now, obviously, he was in that cutscene or in that story, so I'm very curious to see what Deluc's side of that was. Now, I have seen a lot of you guys mention that there is a webcomic that you can read about Genshin that has way more lore involved and it tells you a lot more that the game simply doesn't. Now, if that tells us a bit more about Venti and Deluc and the whole tyrant revolution, then that would be really cool to check out one day. I want to check that out anyway, but do let me know in the comments if there is a bit more lore around that that we can find out. But I do think for now we are going to leave it there for today, guys. As I said, I think we'll leave it there for today, guys. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I honestly, I swear, it pulls on your heartstrings. The stories in Genshin, man, and Venti's, I think, is probably one of the saddest ones yet. I mean, they're all so unique, even if they do have some similarities. And I really cannot wait to do the rest of them. I think they're going to be so much fun. And even if they are sad, it just makes me give so much more thought and love towards the characters. So I just want to once again, thank Mihoyo for doing such an amazing job on the game. And I really can't wait to see more of Venti in the game. I hope he does get some more screen time and I'm sure he will way later on down the line anyway. I really hope you enjoyed today's video guys. Guys, but just before we go, I want to give a massive thank you to the channel members who are Captain Jace, Lu O, Helen Nix, Velzard, Huang Li, Christine Pearl Labena, Dreamer Zeke, Nianzian, Kuro, Leah752, Manny K, Ono, Venny, Tulni, D Chris Wong, Banana Neil, Scaramouche, 
Shanilla, Eric Bush, Hardgrass29, Sandman, and a huge thank you to our full-on wizard members who are Sparky007, Moist, and Snorri Stolusen. Thank you guys so much. And a massive thank you to you for watching. I will see you on Sunday for the Sunday stream. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, guys. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye, my friends.